When a fork has been around for longer than some members of the Bike Radar team have been on this earth, it's safe to say that it's steeped in mountain bike history. For 2024, RockShox are aiming for the updated SID and matching SID look shock to add even more silverware to the cabinet with the latest range of updates across the SID family, including the new SID SL, one of the lightest SID forks ever made. But as we're about to find out, there's a whole lot more to these latest bouncers than just XC racing. RockShox last updated the SID lineup back in 2020, rebadging the light 32mm stanchion fork, the SID SL, while introducing a new normal SID with burly at 35mm upper tubes. It weighed around 150 grams more, but offered a stiffer structure for today's increasingly technical World Cup race courses and the rise of truly shreddable downcountry bikes, just like my Transition Spur and the Mondraker F Podium DC here. Which brings me neatly onto the new 2024 SID range. While the new SID fork has been designed with XC Racing in mind, just like the old fork, RockShox claims the changes for 2024 make it a far more capable fork on the trail outside of the race tapes. After studying how their forks were used during races, RockShox realised that riders could benefit from expanding damping adjustments across the range, extending beyond the just open and lock settings of the original Charger race day damper. To remedy this and give more traction and control, the SID forks debut the new Charger Race Day 2 damper on Ultimate and Select Plus models. In a similar vein to Scott's twin lock system, which features three modes, the new damper gives riders three damping options to choose from. Switching between open, pedal and lock alters the low speed compression damping, effectively firming up the fork and making it bob less, and therefore in theory more efficient. The biggie here is the inclusion of the pedal mode the halfway house between open and lock. RockShox says the goal here was to ensure riders maintain traction and keep the front wheel tracking over bumps, but without the fork excessively bouncing when under rider inputs. Perhaps best of all though, if you already have the previous iteration of the SID or SID SL fork, you can retrofit the new Charger Race Day 2 damper should you wish. Also new for 2024 is the all new Debonair Plus Air Spring, which features in all four SID models, though not on the new SID SL. The previous SID was a very progressive fork, so to allow riders to access full travel without needing a huge hug to flat to achieve it, the new Debonair Plus Spring features significantly tweaked positive and negative air chambers. The positive air volume jumps up by 15%, while the negative air volume sees a huge 50% increase. These changes should combine to help the SID sink easily into the first part of its travel, as well as lessen the progressive ramp up at the end of the stroke, allowing riders to access every single millimetre of bounce. There's also a new top out coil spring, rather than a rubber bumper should you manage to fully smash through the travel, a conically spaced Jones bumper is there to cushion the blow. Sadly, unlike the new race day damper, the new Debonair Plus spring isn't backwards compatible, as many of the changes are linked to the chassis alterations. So what about those chassis changes? The 2024 SID continues to use 35mm upper tubes just as before, but RockShox has reduced material in key areas, mainly the lower legs, but most obviously the fresh crown. This is a new, heavily machined alloy number, which is said to be lighter than its predecessor. It's so light, in fact, that when we quizzed RockShox as to why there isn't a carbon option, they said they've achieved a stiffer crown at a comparable weight, so the added cost was unnecessary. All in all, these changes equate to a small weight saving of 30 grams and a claimed weight of 1,476 grams for this range-topping SID Ultimate. RockShox has increased the length of the upper tubes by 25 mm and spaced out the bushings more to increase bushing overlap, which should, according to RockShox, help reduce side load on each bushing during impacts, limiting friction and also boosting overall durability. While the new 35mm SID will likely hog the limelight, its lightweight 32mm leg stablemate hasn't missed out on some key updates. And if you want more details on that fork along with even more tech nerdery on the new SID, then be sure to toddle on over to the news story on BikeRadar.com with the link in the description. Moving rearwards on the bike, and just like the SID and SID SL forks, for 2024 the SID Lux Shock moves to a new 3 position damping system. Externally, the chassis remains more or less the same as the previous version, though RockShox have made changes internally to create a shock that closely mimics the feel of the forks. You'll still need a 2.5mm Allen key to alter the rebound damping, 
but if you have a SID or SID SL fork, you can pop the 2.5mm Allen key that doubles as the reband dial out and use that. If you want to know more about the rear shock, head to BikeRadar.com to find out, with the link in the video description. Our technical editor-in-chief, Rob Weaver, has been testing the new SID fork and SID shock for the last couple of weeks. So Rob, tell us what have you been testing and where have you been testing it? So Tom, I've got the new RockShox SID Ultimate fork here with a three position damper, so the new Charger Race Day 2 damper and the matching SID Lux shock, also the Ultimate version, also three positions. Nice. Uh, and then I've been riding it in these woods right here as well as other places, other trail centers. Uh, I also even managed to try and do a cross country race. So my first in a very long time. I didn't die, I wasn't sick, and I had a great time doing it on this very lovely Mondraker F Podium down country bike. Lovely, so this is a similar setup to you had when you tested the previous iteration of the SID fork and shock. So you had a pretty good baseline to work from when testing the new stuff. Exactly, yeah, and I've, um, it's probably worth mentioning that I've also ridden the SID fork on numerous other bikes as well, as well as the same shock on a spur like yours yeah, and, yeah. and various other bikes over the years. So I definitely had a good handle on how the older fork behaved. So it was a great place to start for the new fork. So we both have a lot of time on the older SID forks and we're both big fans. So before we get into any positives of the new forks, any negatives to start off with? Well, Tom, yes. One, very small, but the new twist lock remote only comes with push on grip. So they do two different types a smooth version or a textured version, which I've got. And I'll admit, they are comfier than the older lock-on version. But if you don't like the hassle of a push-on grip and all the things that go with that, whether that's wiring, whether that's hairspray, however you want to attach them, that's your only option right now. There's no lock-on. Um, so, I mean, it's a small gripe. It is very small, but it's an odd one when they did have a lock-on, a less comfortable, but the older version yeah, did it, have a lock-on yeah, as well. Yeah, it was definitely firmer on the hand, um, and this is way more forgiving, but my preference is generally always going to be lock-on, I think. Now we've got that native out of the way, what did you find positive about them? So I think, first and foremost, they're super sensitive, just like the old one was, but this feels that bit better at keeping the front wheel attached to the ground it just feels like you can generate more grip from that, um, the fluttering in and out of that initial part of the travel. And also on the huge, like heavy, heavy impact, the old fork ramped up a lot. I'm not sure about how you found it, but- it's Massively. Yeah, You've really got to smack right? it to really get full travel. I don't think I've ever hit full bottom out of my fork. E exactly. Whereas you can achieve it on this and it's, it's not like a metal on metal hard bottom out but you do feel like you're almost getting your value for money when it comes to the travel. Yeah. So you can use all of that, which helps, I think, with setup. You're not trying to compensate for that steeper ramp. Yeah, you're not trying to run it softer just to get more of that available travel. Exactly. Any notes on the rear shock as well? Obviously, that's had much smaller changes compared to the fork. Yeah, so uh, the main changes with the rear shock uh, are predominantly internal. The biggest thing is they've eased off on the compression damping, specifically the high speed. So the idea is they're trying to match uh, the feel of the fork with the shock. And I would say, yeah, you could argue it's it's um, a bit more forgiving and it, and it does sort of sink well for a fairly balanced ride. I can caveat though that with the previous bike I rode didn't have quite as much travel, only a few more. Um, small difference, yeah, but it all small adds up. Difference. Yeah, but I think it is a touch more sensitive and um, yeah, just a bit more forgiving in the really choppy sort of terrain. So while the other changes are subtle, the big change really is to the damper and those three positions. Did you find that middle pedal position useful in comparison to the just open and lock of the old fork and shock? Um, I would say when, uh, specifically when I raced, and this is why I wanted to use it in a race situation, I found myself using that twist lock remote way more than I expected. Probably the biggest benefit is on the shock, just being yeah. able to firm it up to keep things efficient, but it doesn't really have a, a negative impact on the fork. It, you know, um, I, it's nice that you can fully lock them out. I rarely did that. I might do it, you know, occasionally if I'm doing a longer ride with tarmac stints. Yeah, or if you are, you know, sort of racing and you're going for that sprint to the line, it's a handy thing to have. Exactly, exactly. It's really useful for certain aspects of riding, but for me, especially outside of racing, I barely touched it, to be quite honest. But I liked how efficient the pedal mode would make, especially with the uh, rear shock. The fork stays relatively open, but it does firm up a little bit. So not moving around too much, you don't feel like you're expending too much energy unnecessarily, which is great. And then, yeah, just a flick of the wrist and your 
fully open again. Nice and easy, which is great. That's what you want. And it is something I've noticed on the old SID shocks and my transition in particular. You just want that middle mode. It's like you don't want the full lock where it's just a little bit harsh over rougher terrain. Yeah. You just want that middle setting for just a little bit more efficiency without it sort of sinking into the travel and compromising the geometry more than anything else. Okay, Rob, so putting you on the spot, it's your own cold, hard cash. Are you going old or are you going new SID? New SID, hands down, new SID. This feels like a more complete fork. One of the biggest things I think is when you are pushing on and, and you know, if you are heading off piece, you're not just sticking to the regular trail center trails or a racetrack and you want to explore a little further afield, this fork is seriously capable. Not that the other one wasn't, but this fork just feels like it's, it's a fuller bodied fork. It has, it's more capable, it's more controlled. It's, it's just a, a better fork. Don't get me wrong, you can get it out of its depth if you push too hard, ride something that's too gnarly, but for the most part, if you wanted to explore a bit more, it's brilliant. So there we have it. RockShox have upped the game yet again, and who knows, maybe we'll see the SID go even further if what we've seen on the World Cup circuit comes to fruition for the general public. If you don't want to miss out on any news on that fork in the future, then make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you want to see a video on another lightweight XC fork, then check out this wonderful video right in front of Rob's face. <laughs>